Hi everyone. It is April 21, 2019. I have been bookmarking some articles on how fabulous our economy is doing. Oh wait, no. It's really not doing well at all. In fact, it's quite ill. So I'm just going to take uh, you through some of those articles. Growing number of Americans can't afford to buy or rent. Rental housing costs increased by 6% from 2008 to 2011, while renters' incomes dropped by over 3% during the same time. Ow! Wow! Well, that sure did squeeze an awful lot of Americans into financial hardship. This was in 2014. Do you think things are better now? Well, 2019 American rents climb to record highs despite slump in home sales. Okay, 70% uh, of the country in 70% of the country, the average person can't afford to buy a home. Okay, that doesn't sound good. Uh, this isn't just the obvious high cost of living places like Washington, D.C. and New York City, Maricopa County in Arizona, Miami-Dade Miami County in Florida, San Diego, Los Angeles counties, and I'm glad the writer put in admittedly LA's inclusion on list is far from surprising, but I would have thought San Diego is far from surprising as well. But the fact is, is that rents are. I think the average rent now is over $1,200 a month. So when you think about that, and you think about the fact that, yeah, a whole lot of people are working minimum wage? Well, how do they make it? Almost 40 million Americans live in housing they can't afford. Home ownership has gone down and rental prices keep going up, meaning that millions of residents are forced to pay more than they reasonably should. Home ownership keeps declining, in part because home prices in many markets have continued to go up while wages have not kept pace. It's still going on. In 2016, the home ownership rate fell to 63.4 percent, making the making that the the 12th consecutive year of declines. We're close to only half of the population owning a home. Now. We were known, you know, certainly the middle class. Home ownership, that was the asset that uh, most Americans had. They no longer have it, a whole lot of them. Payroll tsunami, small businesses laying off workers to comply with minimum wage laws. And that was expected. That was expected. Uh-oh, the number of job openings in the U.S. dropped by more than half a million in just one month. What happened? When you have an economy that's strong and booming and doing fabulously, you don't see these numbers. So the plunge by the largest amount we have seen in nearly four years. The latest JOLTS report the uh, coming out of the Labor Department report shows that the number of job openings has declined by 538,000 and that is a really big number for just a single month but we shouldn't be surprised by this at all because it is perfectly consistent with all of the other dismal economic numbers that that are coming fast and furiously we should expect to see the employment numbers get worse when our economy slows down, and it is slowing down, goods begin to pile up in warehouses. The inventory to sales ratio in the U.S. has now increased for five months in a row. Five months in a row. 
That means that goods are, well, the sales are slowing down considerably. Fewer sales should results should result in less stuff being shipped around the nation by freight. Freight, oh Carol, please hang on to your ability to speak, please. Okay, uh, by freight and rail and air. U.S. freight shipment volume has dropped for three months in a row. Businesses realize that economic conditions have changed. Well, what happens? They start reducing the number of job openings, laying off workers, adding jobs. It has been at the slowest pace for 18 months. You cannot rely on mainstream media, nor the Trump administration, nor Trump, who so applauds himself. Aren't I great? Americans are back at work. No, they're not. Even techie, techie companies are not hiring. What are they doing with their money? They are purchasing their own shares. 10 U.S. tech companies spent more than $169 billion purchasing their own shares in 2018. Well, when you're relying on the wealthy to provide jobs, it doesn't happen. Um, so we have a whole ton of stores closing in 2019. All right, I'm going to go through Kohl's. Kohl's, four. Oh, big deal, right? Well, Target, six. Big deal, Target is all over the place. J. Crew, seven. Macy's, nine or eight, I'm sorry, eight. Lord and Taylor, nine. Z Gallery, 17. Southeastern Grocers, 22. The uh, supermarkets under Southeastern Grocers, Winn-Dixie, Bilo, and Harvey's. Henry Bendel, 23 stores, will be closing. Beauty Brands, 25 stores. J.C. Penney, 27 stores. And they were closing stores in 2018. This is just for 2019. Christopher and Banks, 40. Francesca's, up to 40. Bed, Bath & Beyond, 40. The Children's Place, 45. Kmart, I thought Kmart was done for. <laughs> well, I guess it's hanging on. 48 stores. Lowe's, 51 stores. Wow. So, interesting, isn't it? Lowe's, closing stores, 51. I guess the housing market is not doing very well, and I guess, well, consumers, you know, doing all of that work on their home. Maybe they don't have the money anymore. Victoria's Secret, 53. Destination Maternity, up to 67 stores. Sears, 72 stores. And we know Sears had filed for bankruptcy closed a slew of stores in 2018. Performance Bicycle, 102 stores. Wow. You would think, you know, that, oh, get on a bicycle, get out of your car. Well, Performance Bicycle, 102 stores closing. Pier 1 Imports, up to 145 closings. Signet Jewelers, up to... Uh, well, 150 closing. Starbucks, 150 closings. That's three times the number of shutdowns each year. Three times the roughly 50 that Starbucks usually shuts down each year. What's happening? Fred's, 
which is, I guess, a dollar store, uh, 159 closings. Lifeway Christian stores, 170 closings. Um, and Senna Retail Group, which is Ann Taylor, Loft, Dress Barn, Lane Bryant, Catherine's, and Justice, 200 stores. Things Remembered, more than 200 stores. Gap, 230. Chico's, 250. Shopco, 363. Family Dollar, 390. Wow, I thought these dollar stores were doing beautifully. Charlotte Russe, 512 stores. Jimbury, 800 stores. 800 Payless Shoe Store, well, it's going out of business. 2,100 stores closing. Now how many jobs are gone? Yeah, online uh, purchasing, online shopping. It's killing malls, it's killing stores. And eventually we will just be sitting in front of these screens doing everything, even food shopping and having our food delivered, oh, by robots. Okay, you can come over here to uh, Daily Job Cuts. And I do believe that there is a daily um, the job cuts, and I don't know what the other one is called, but it's like a daily hire, <laughs> jobhires.com. Um, but when you look at the layoffs that's taking place, and these are not, you know, those retail stores, uh, school districts, four layoffs, uh, Hart Hanks, 70 layoffs. Here, the Alum Rock Unified School District, 50. JAMA Software, 17, City of Little Rock, potential layoffs, Ethan Allen, 325 layoffs, Eagle Pitcher, 39, ProMedica, 100, Idaho Nuclear Waste Processing Project, up to 190, Arconic Technology, 100, AAR Corp, 80, Laird Technologies, 8, GE Digital, 172, uh, fuel Cell Energy, 135. SeaWorld, there'll be layoffs. Lowe's in Charlotte and Wilkesboro, 219. Purdue Farms, 118. Uh, Spokane Public Schools, 325 layoff notices. College of New Rochelle, 500 layoff notices. Gilead Sciences, 150. Furlough, uh, Con Kraus Furlough, 160. Rome School District, 90. Owens, Illinois, 400 possible layoffs. Kohler Company, 223. A whole lot, 241. 1,600 trading jobs. 47 municipal employees, City of Houston. 785 layoffs, Concentrix Corp, Tucson Call Center, 300 from Pier 66 and Beachcomber Resorts, 250 plus wireless, um, Verizon Wireless, Albuquerque, 207 in the Lowe's Charlotte facility, Houston Fire Department, 40 possible layoffs. Flint Group plant in Elizabethtown, 81. Uh, 175 from a hospital. 118 from some seating plant. 45, 250, 37, 500. 161, 66, 118. 318, 200, 
26, 144, 140, 178, 450, 380, 150, 200, 150 possible layoffs. Patterson, New Jersey schools. 87, Fifth Third Bank in Ann Harbor. 350 electronic arts. 200 plus, 102, 53, yeah. Well, we're uh, we're not in good shape. And this column over here are your closings that were not mentioned. Office Depot closing two of its seven Memphis area stores. Guthrie's Pharmacy, Trolley Car, Industrial Company. Uh, House Wine, Call Vista, Pier 1 Imports, 145 stores. Paul's Discount, all of these closings. And what is the middle one? Bankruptcies. Okay, well, uh, robots. Robots. Rise of the robots. 60,000 workers called from just one factory. That was in China. What's happening with that Racine, uh, Wisconsin? Oh, you know, Trump. Oh, my God, the great negotiator brought over a company, now a Foxconn. And that company in China, uh, Foxconn, was it in China or some province in China? I don't know. But they had already gotten rid of tens of thousands of employees and the robots are now doing the job. I've got to look into Foxconn. Yeah, that was another. Yay, Trump bringing jobs to Racine. I believe you were lied to because automation, robots, in every sector of the economy, the robots, the automation continues to increase. Continues. Walmart is bringing out their robot army. Um, robots and artificial intelligence spell change for workers, not replacement, just uh, a change. Who's going to be uh, reskilling all of uh, our American workers, those jobs that are going to be taken over by robots. In the era of automation, how will the job market adapt? Who will pay the $34 billion to reskill American workers? Um, so, farming, 5G smart cows milked by robots in England. 50 cows have been outfitted with 5G smart collars and ear tag sensors that monitor their health. Oh, God. Can you imagine wearing a 5G smart collar? Machines observe the cow's health, production, and even rewards them with munchies. Meanwhile, sensors on the cow's ear monitor vital signs for indications of discomfort during the milking process and alert operators of trouble. We are testing the ability of 5G to transmit the data from our sensors much quicker. It's smart feeding, huh. smart feeding system that automatically delivers food in the barn via ceiling mounted rails. You see where this is going? Okay. It is going to uh, destroy an awful lot of jobs for human beings. It could eliminate upwards of 20 to 25 percent of current jobs hitting middle to low income workers the hardest by the late 2020s. Farmers are at risk of losing their jobs to robots. And of course, more corporations 
BMW to freeze U.S. pension plan this summer. You cannot count on your pensions, even if you work for government. I know a lot of government workers feel they are completely secure, and you're not. You're really not, especially those who are the local governments, the uh, state governments, the uh, school districts. Um, what do you hear from them? We don't have any money. We don't have any money. We don't have, well, of course they do. Check out the CAFR, the comprehensive um, accounting of these governments that you never get to see. All they do is play around with the numbers and then they bitch and complain. We've got to raise taxes because we don't have money. You know, I was driving yesterday. I couldn't believe the sign that I saw. Hannah School, it's a high school here in Anderson, South Carolina. They were having a mattress sale, like a, a bake sale, you know, how they do these bake sales to um, for school funding. A mattress sale so they could increase... Uh, their finances for these schools. When you see this kind of stuff happening, you know, I, I just, I, I look at this and I, I think to myself, you know, schmucks, we're schmucks. Yeah. The school district, they say they don't have any money. Well, negative interest rates are coming. So, negative rates indicate that the economy is unable to generate sufficient income to service its debt. Almost always, all roads lead us back to debt sustainability levels. In order for an economic system to reduce debt, it requires growth or inflation or currency devaluation. For an economic system to exercise one of the two, well, one of the two, Growth not included because growth ain't happening. The economy is slowing down. Well, to exercise inflation or currency devaluation, capital transfer is to be facilitated. And how will they do that? Negative interest rates. Yes, everything is about stealing your money. Shrinking middle class leaves no room for millennials. This is happening across the world. The middle class is experiencing an unprecedented decline, decline with younger generations facing an uphill battle in discovering monetary stability in lots of wealthier nations. Yeah, this is what the older generation left for the younger generation. Costs have actually increased much faster than inflation for some of the key pillars of middle-class life, like housing. It's risen three times quicker than household medium income over the last 20 years. Workers have dealt with rising job instability, made worse recently by the rise of automation, and uh, which now threaten a sixth of all middle-class jobs. Other elements adding to stresses experienced by the middle class are the rising costs of real estate, education, health care, and as a result, half of all middle income homes in wealthier nations now have a tough time just keeping up. The pathway to the middle class is no longer assured, even when several members are earning what used to be middle class wages. Uh, here, 4 million robots will work in 50,000 warehouses in six years. Six years. Just before the Great Recession, mountains of unsold goods piled up in the U.S. warehouses, and now it is happening again. I just want to point out that you're seeing the same signs that we saw before other crashes.
Half of older Americans have nothing in retirement savings. Wow. 55 and older. 48% had nothing put away in a 401k style defined contribution plan or an individual retirement account. We're looking at a lot of homeless people. And, you know, more and more homeless, they're working, but they can't afford rent and they can't afford certainly to buy a home, but they're working. What's happened here in our, oh, the wealthiest country in the world with so much opportunity, something has radically changed. Okay, we know they are destroying the economy. So when you listen to mainstream media or Trump or Trump administration, hey, I'm the greatest. Americans are back at work. It's bullshit. More and more Americans are really struggling and more and more are dumped on the streets. So why are American communities dying? Most Americans who have been around for a while know life is nothing like it used to be. When someone wanted a job, one was found with little, uh, just a little bit of searching. Remember that decades ago? Today, jobs are difficult to find, especially in small communities. A nation's wealth is derived from having a product to sell that wealth needs to circulate in towns and cities to compound the wealth effect and create jobs and businesses. When wealth is not created or it is siphoned off to other places, the wealth effect cannot happen and in many cases goes into reverse. In a lot of communities across our country, it's in reverse. A community needs a certain amount of service related jobs to function, but it also needs some type of production jobs to bring in money from the outside. This can be mining, agriculture, manufacturing type jobs. American farmers, well, they're committing suicide at a higher rate. Uh, lots of them got destroyed this year due to the flooding in Nebraska and Iowa and South Dakota. Kansas and mining. Well, did Trump restore the mining? No. So um, these things must exist to ensure a healthy economy. A large amount of our production is done outside the country, eliminating production jobs in local communities and many of the small local businesses that kept wealth within communities have been supplanted by large corporations. I live in Anderson, South Carolina. I feel like I live in an open air mall. What do you see? Corporate retail, fast food, chain restaurants, box stores, mom and pop, gone. A large, um, here, I'm sorry, in the past when a small business made profit, that profit was kept in the local community because that is where the owner lived. Now that profit leaves the community never to be seen again. With less money to circulate within the community, the businesses that depend on people spending their extra dollars have fewer customers and eventually go out of business with fewer jobs there is that much less money circulating and the economic situation spirals down until nothing is left. This is deliberate. This is a design. This is what is happening. But it was deliberately designed. You know, you got Walmart closing down a lot of mom and pop stores. You've got corporate America buying up so many businesses and coming into uh, local communities 
which depresses that community until it's impoverished. And guess what? People then move out into the mega cities, the mega regions, where there are jobs. It's very easy to move about a population. Where are the jobs? Well, you locate them in specific regions around the country. You get people going there. Um, corporate businesses, government jobs make up the major part of many local communities now. And in many cases, if it were not for government jobs, many communities would no longer exist. But what happens when those governments say, oops, we're out of money, sorry, we're going bankrupt, too bad for you. And the corporate stores moved in and drove small local businesses out. Well, then the profits dried up in the corporate stores that are closed. And then you see all of these retail giants closing so many stores and communities. Then you have no jobs, no products to buy. And, well, you're in bad shape. So yes, rebuild your community with small businesses. Very hard to do when hardly anybody has any capital today. Um, communities have to come together. It's unfortunate that a lot of Americans really don't understand what is happening here in our country. And they believe the, I'm sorry to say, the horseshit coming out of our federal government, our president, our mainstream media reporters, they believe it. Oh, the economy's great. And then they say, oh, there's so many jobs. And then you get Americans judging other Americans for not being able to find work. Wow. Well, that certainly is yet another fabulous way to get Americans, you know, just at one another's throats. The economy is not doing well. And yeah, communities really do need to start getting together, thinking outside the box, thinking about ideas. Otherwise, no one will survive. They'll all go down. I just want to introduce you to local currencies. And there are a number of local currencies Berkshires for Berkshires, the Berkshires region of Massachusetts. And yes, this is real. It was happening when I lived in Great Barrington, which is in the Berkshires. You might want to try to find people in your community that are financially savvy. Talk to them about starting your own local currency. Um, I will link below to this. In fact, I'll link below to uh, berkshires.org. Um, but it is the Berkshires website lists around 400 businesses in Berkshires County, in Berkshire County, that accept the currency. Um, over 7 million Berkshires have been issued from participating branch offices of local banks. Um, this is one way to keep money in your community. It's a local currency designed and issued for one specific re region and residents purchase Berkshires at 95 cents per Berkshire from one of 16 branches of four local participating banks. And businesses accept Berkshires at full dollar value. Okay. I will link below to everything. Um, guys, we are not uh, doing better. We are actually doing worse. And you got to take steps to try to protect yourself and your own community 
there are things that we can be doing. We've got to start thinking outside the box. Step out of the matrix. Don't just think, well, which, which is a comment that I got under the Trump video I posted earlier. Well, he's all we got. Uh, that kind of thinking shows me that the thinking is so narrowly confined to this matrix indoctrinated thinking. Think outside the box. All links are below.